So next, this question is getting increasingly popular on the SAT, and it's also like my ex on Instagram. It looks nothing like the picture. Of the 25 concepts tested on the SAT and 100 different types of questions, there are these five questions that are one, almost on every single exam, two, they're getting increasingly popular, and three, they're one of those questions you either you know it or you don't. And today I'm gonna show you what these five questions look like, what you need to know for them, and how to solve them quickly so that you won't lose out on these easy score boosters on your next SAT. All right, guys, let's get started with the first question right here. But first, a PDF of all the questions that we're going to go over today is going to be linked in the pinned comment down below. I'm going to show you what these five questions are, summarize exactly what you need to know, and I'm going to link you to a video that teaches you this concept step by step. Raising your SAT score is like any kind of sport. You don't get better by watching other people play. You get better by actually going to the field and playing yourself. So take the next 10 seconds to print this out and get 10 times better the result. So in the question, we're given a line over here and a parabola because we're working with x squared. And it tells us that b squared is zero and the system has exactly one solution. What's the value of B? So this is a very popular question type on the SAT. Whenever you're working with a parabola and a line and you're looking for a number of solution, you have to use something known as discriminant. Here's why. If we graph these two things out, we're going to have a line at Y is equal to one, and we're going to have a parabola that's going to be facing upward. We're not sure if it's going to be here, here, or like here. We don't know where it exactly it is. But the question tells us that it has exactly one solution, right? So a key point here is whenever you're dealing with multiple equation, multiple shapes, multiple graphs, and it's talking about solution. Solution is essentially talking about the intersection. So in this case, when two of these things have one solution, that means they have one intersection like this graph over here. Well, there's zero intersection here. So let's redraw that. It's going to look something like this, like roughly it's going to have one solution or one intersection right there. And whenever you're talking about the intersection between a line and the parabola, you have to use discriminant because that's the whole purpose of discriminant, which has a formula of B squared minus four AC. The purpose is to find the number of intersection between line and a parabola. Now, if you want to learn everything you need to know about discriminants for the SAT, simply click this link over here and it's going to take you to a video. So how you can solve this question is first, you're going to set the equations equal to each other is equal to X squared plus BX plus five and you're going to move everything to the one side zero is equal to x squared plus bx plus four and then you're going to find discriminant which is going to be b squared minus four a which is going to be one here and then c is going to be four here and because it has one exactly one solution we know that the discriminant needs to equal to zero so if we do the math b squared minus 16 is equal to zero that means b squared is equal to 16, which means b can equal to plus or minus four. And because our b has to be greater than zero, our answer is going to be positive four. So you definitely want to remember that line and a parabola and you're looking for number of intersection, always think about discriminant and you can learn it right here. It might not make sense now, but it's going to make a lot more sense. It's going to look super simple once you watch the video and really understand and internalize discriminant. That's how SAT is. If you don't know the concept, it looks super complicated, but once you know what to look for and you have the right knowledge, it's the easiest exam out there. Not really, but. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's look at the next question. The question says, we're working with two graphs over here and it says graphed on the XY plane, the function above intersecting at two points. Which of the following is the sum of the X coordinates of these two points? Now, this question looks pretty similar to the previous question. We're working with a line and a parabola. But instead of working with the number of intersections, we're talking about the X coordinates of the intersection. So the question is a little bit different. You have to understand how to find the intersection. Where is the intersection located? That's a very popular type on the SAT, finding the location location of the intersection between two graphs. And here's simply how you do it. Whenever you're looking for an intersection, all you have to do is set the two equations equal to each other. And we'll go over exactly why in a second. And that's really important, but we'll go over in a second, but here's how you solve it. So we're going to do X squared plus 12 is equal to minus seven X. We're just going to move it to the other side. X squared plus seven X is e plus 12 is equal to zero. We have a quadratic function set equal to zero. We're going to factor and find out what the X's are. So it's going to be X plus four and then X plus three, which means means our X's are going to be minus four and minus three. Okay. So these X's show you the X coordinates of the intersection between these two graphs. So in order for us to find the sum, all you have to do is just add two of these things up, which means you're going to get negative seven, which is going to be choice B. And now if you're shooting for 700 plus, you could have recognized that, oh, we're working with a parabola and we're looking for a sum. Then we can use the sum of the roots formula, which is going to be negative B over A. That's kind of advanced, but you can also learn about this in this lecture for discriminant right here. It's all in there for parabola. But let's talk about why we need to set them equal to each other when we're looking for intersection, right? So let's say you have like a line and a parabola like in this case, right? At the intersection point, what's going to happen is that they are going to share the same 
x and y value, right? When it comes to any other point that's not intersecting, at x is equal to minus one, their y values are going to be different, right? But at the intersection point right here, whenever they are intersecting, what's gonna happen is that they're gonna share the same x value and they're gonna have the same y value only at the intersection points. So what that means is at the intersection point, their y values are going to be the same, right? Their y values are going to be the same. And because y's are the same, you can also set the x portions equal to each other. And that's why we did this over here. So the key takeaway here is when you're looking for intersection between two graphs, at the intersection, they share the same x and y, which allows you to set the equations equal to each other. Once you got that, you're set. And one more thing, intersections and solutions are essentially the same thing. So the question could also say there are two solution points, but they're just talking about intersections. So don't get confused there. Let's keep going. Number three. Are you sure about that? Or number 19. I can't read numbers. The question says a cologne is currently on sale and it is priced at 1430. Assuming this is the price after 35% sale was applied, what's the original price, right? So when it comes to SAT, I don't know why SAT and percent have this relationship. It's like a fat kid going to a candy store. They just can't never have enough of it. Like myself, back in fifth grade. These questions are super popular and there's a lot of variations of percent questions you need to know, which you can learn all about by watching this video right here. But the key skill that you need to have is going to be the percent basics. And that's what this question is all about. So we see that there is a original price of the cologne and there's also the final price of the cologne, right? And there was a 35% discount. So all we have to do here is just to piece these things together using the percent operations. So do we know the original price? We don't. So we're just going to call it P. And what happened was that there was a 30 35% discount, right? So if there's a 35% discount, you're essentially ending up paying just 65% of the final price. Because if you think about it, the regular price is going to be 100%. But if there's a 35% discount, you're essentially just paying for 65% or the remaining. And after the 35% discount is applied, the final price comes out to 1430. So what do we do? We put all these things together and then cook it into an equation. So we're going to get P times, how do you find 65%? 0.65, which is the decimal version. And then final price is 1430. Our our original price is going to be 14.3 divided by 0 0.65, which is, let me get my calculator. I can't find my calculator, so let me just use my brain. It's gonna be 22. So what's the original price? Original price is going to be 22. So you're gonna to wanna to know basics, which is going to be shown right here, how to convert percent into decimal and multiply. So when it comes to percent questions, which you are definitely going to see, you wanna understand and master the basics, which is percent operations right here. And there are like six different types of percent questions you need to know for the SAT. You can learn them by clicking this link right here. So next, this question is getting increasingly popular on the SAT. And it's also like my ex on Instagram. It looks nothing like the picture. On the surface, it looks like a algebra question. You see a bunch of X's, Y's. It looks like a equation question, but it's actually testing you on circles. So on the SAT, circles not only show up in shapes, but they also show up as equations. And equation of a circle is the concept you need to know for this question. So the question is asking, what is the area of the circle based on this equation right here? Well, the area of a circle is simple. You just need to do pi r squared and for us to find the area, we just need to find out what the radius is. But how are we supposed to find it from a equation? So what needs to happen is that we need to convert this into a equation of a circle format. So we're going to do that by adding nine here on the left side. And just like everything in life, when you do it on one side, also do it on the other side as well. And by doing this, we can now factor this equation into x plus four squared plus y plus or minus three squared is equal to 24. And the equation of a circle states that your center is located at minus four and positive three and your radius is going to be just square root of 24, which is going to be two root six. So if we plug this bad boy into the equation, we're gonna get pi times two root six squared, and that's going to be 24 pi. Our answer is going to be choice C. So the key takeaway here, whenever you're seeing x squared and y squared on the same question on the SAT, it's testing you on equation of a circle, and they are either going to be testing you on completing the square like we did over here, or interpreting the result like finding the center and the radius of a circle, which you can learn by clicking this link over here. Let's go to the next question and the last one. And this is one of my personal favorite because it looks like such a complicated question. And SAT knows that a lot of people just skip this one or guess on it because it looks hard, but it's actually really easy if you know exactly what to do. So the question is showing us two triangles right here. And it says BC is equal to four, D is eight, C is 10. If the side length of AD is root X, what's the value of X? So we essentially need to find out what the length of this thing is. And also this is not your typical Pythagorean theorem because in order for us to find the third missing side, we need to know this side and what this side is. And that's exactly what we need to do. So we're going to use the missing third side by using what's known as the short
short long method, which is the key concept of four similar triangles. So the first thing you need to do is check whether they are going to be similar. We see that, okay, they both share this, they both share that, they both have 90. So these two triangles are going to be similar. We checked the definition of similar triangle. So yes, let's use the short long method. We have a short side, long side. So we're going to have four over eight. So we have the short side, which is going to be AC over the long side, which is going to be AC plus 10, which is going to be this whole length right there. So we're going to get AC plus 10. And if we can find out what AC is equal to, then we can combine it with 10 and we can find the whole third missing side, which means you can use Pythagorean theorem. So we just cross multiply 4AC plus 40 is equal to 8AC, which means 4 AC, 40 is equal to 4AC, AC is equal to 10. So AC is going to be 10 right here, which means using Pythagorean theorem, we can do eight squared plus 20 squared is equal to AD squared, which is going to be 64 plus 400, which is 464. And that is equal to AD squared. So just AD is going to be radical 464. That's going to be our answer. Now you want to have 110% understanding of the similar triangles concept. Without it, you're going to get confused and SAT is going to trick you and you're going to get a lower score. So make sure you watch this video and really internalize it. If you don't want to, I mean, that's fine. It's your score. And the most most important advice that I have for you is that whenever SAT gets hard, chances are you're studying the wrong way and the wrong things. So learn the right things like we did over here, and then you're going to have a much easier time raising your score.